Washington, Independent Horror News. I'm your host, Julie O'Malley, and this is our debut episode. Coming up, we have an exclusive interview with The Ghoul's director, Chad Farron. But first, our top stories. Fangoria reported that Mike Watt announced the completion of the epic seven years in the making zombie film, The Resurrection Game. Glenn Danzig, Ferrata Publishing, and Moorhead Productions announced this month the release of Grub Girl, the story of his zombie hooker bent on revenge. Grub Girl is directed by veteran and adult film director Craven Moorhead and stars adult film actress Brittany Skye. Special Ghost Films announced the premiere of Special Dead at an as of yet unannounced location in Hollywood for the end of February. Described as Evil Dead means something about Mary, Special Dead is the story of zombies attacking a summer camp for the mentally handicapped. Variety announced the Picture House has acquired North American distribution rights to Guillermo del Toro's new Spanish language film, the supernatural thriller Pan's Labyrinth. Also worth a mention, Variety reports that New Line has announced a new Friday the 13th movie set for a Friday, October 13, 2006 release. This newest addition to the franchise will explore the origins of Jason. And last, congratulations to our genre's Oscar nominees. Howard Berger for Best Makeup on Chronicles of Narnia, Josh Olsen is up for Best Adapted Screenplay for David Cronenberg's A History of Violence, and Peter Jackson's King Kong is in the running for Best Visual Effects. Now for February's DVD releases. Hi, this is Rafe Benson of IHN with your DVD forecast. On February 7th, Freestyle and Visual Entertainment release The Dark Hours. Anchor Bay releases Demon Hunter, TLA releases Avalinko, and Lloyd and the Boys at Troma release Slaughter Party. February 14th, Creep FX and Maverick release The Dawn. Scott Goldberg Films releases The Day They Came Back. Darren over at Brain Damage and Razor Digital release Hollywood Vampire, Night Chills, In Exchange, and Immortal. Bauer Martinez and Visual Entertainment release House of Nine. B Plus Boy and Tempe release October Moon. Tartan and TLA release Our Point. And Showtime releases Zombie Honeymoon. February 21st sees a slow week with Anchor Bay's release of Class of 1984. On February 28th, Shriek Show Media Blasters bring us The Confessional, aka House of Mortal Sin. Sony Pictures releases Death Tunnel. Tokyo Shock and Media Blasters release Die Covery. Shriek Show and Media Blasters release Evils of the Night. Lionsgate releases Fear of Clowns. Subversive releases The Gardener, aka Seeds of Evil. Gore Zone and Heart Sharp release Joshua. Heretic releases Katie Bird, Certifiable Crazy Person. No Shame brings us the Luciano Ercoli Death Box set Death Walks at Midnight and Death Walks on High Heels. York releases Passing Fancy. Mondo Macabro releases Satan's Blood. Bare Bones and SRS Cinema release Screaming for Sanity. Lionsgate releases. Three, Extremes and Dumplings. Panic House releases Tokyo Psycho. Fox releases The Visitation. Dark Sky releases Werewolves on Wheels. And Asylum releases When a Killer Calls. This is Rafe Benson of IHN with your DVD forecast. Wow, looks like an exciting month. We'll be right back with an exclusive interview with Chad Farron and this month's movie review. Where do you hide? When you're everywhere. everywhere. When there's no way out, now, how do you kill, kill what's already dead? Any way you can. Hi, I'm Chad Farron, and you're watching IHN Independent Horror News. Coming up next, IHN's exclusive interview with director Chad Farron. But first, this month's movie review. Let's get the fuck out of here. No. First we get the money, then we leave. First we get the money, then we let this guy loose, then we leave. One, someone fuck this guy up, and I don't want to be here when that someone gets home. And two, we're like robbing this guy's house in the middle of some kind of sex thing. I don't want to be in the middle of that. No, I won't face it. But what if it is? At least take off the gag and ask him if it's a sex thing. Dude, the guy might know the combination to the safe. You don't understand. The sex thing, part of it can be denying that it's a sex thing. I just know we don't belong here. I'm taking off the gag. 
I'm gonna force this guy to tell me the combination. I need the money. Fuck the money! Where the fuck is Green? The choice. We can always put the gag back on. Hi, this is Eric Doring, and this month we reviewed Gag, a movie that was pretty much disgusting the whole way. The whole entire time, it was like balls to the wall disgusting, basically. To be honest with you, I just I thought it was too much gore, too much, I mean, just moment after moment after moment. The whole entire film is disgusting. There's blood, there's people eating blood, there's like people getting stabbed and intestines are everywhere. There's people being tortured in ways that you couldn't, you wouldn't have even imagined before. Like I felt, after I watched this movie, I felt really dirty and disgusting. I felt like I was somehow gonna be like a worse, like not a worse person, but just I felt just soiled. You know what I mean? Like just kind of gross inside and out and took a shower. That kind of gross. Can't get clean! The first 15 minutes are just like make you want to fall asleep and are uh, torture in their own way, so to speak. I mean, it, it's, it's tedious. Uh, there's a lot of close-ups, like painstakingly slow close-ups. Then we go into following our two heroes uh, through this house. There's no dialogue. It's just, again, more close-ups of these two guys. We have no idea who they are. And they're fumbling around in the darkness through, like, a hallway. And uh, so you kind of lose interest, I think. It gets um, about 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes into it. That's when it starts to get a little more interesting. We start to see the really gory, disgusting torture scenes. And that pretty much takes you all the way to the end of the movie. Uh, the rest of the entire movie is just one scene after another after another of these people being tortured, you know, intestines being pulled out, and people like, like brothers and sisters are doing it, and, and there's poop involved, and there's guts and and people eating glass and just like for the rest of like two hours long, long there's people being tortured every single second is spent being more disgusting than the last if that's believable I mean it is it I just I couldn't even I can't even imagine how this guy thought up this disgusting stuff that he came up with I guess to be fair I'll say there were a couple things about it that were good uh, first of all, you know it's a low-budget movie, but the lighting was really well done. It looked good. Uh, most of the movie, the art department looks really good. You can tell they're working with a low budget, but it's not just cheesy looking. They do a good job uh, set dressing and kind of making everything kind of creepy and, and grungy and, and believable. And they have a lot of, like... S&M outfits and stuff like that, I guess. So, you know, they really went all out in terms of art department. So that was good, and it made it more enjoyable to watch and, you know, just looked better. So that's good. That was good about it. But other than that, it's still disgusting. So I'm Erica Doring for IHN. See you later. Sounds creepy. I'll be sure to put that on my list. And now the IHN news team in Hollywood has caught up with Unspeakable and The Ghoul's director, Chad Farron. Hello, I'm David Defino, producer of IHN Independent Horror News. Today I'm in Hollywood with Chad Farron, acclaimed director of Unspeakable and The Ghoul's. Hello everybody out there in horror land, iPod telecasts. Unspeakable just kind of dropped on, slipping in almost under the radar whereas the ghouls garnered quite a bit of critical acclaim on the festival circuit. No, no, it, uh, it got quite a bit of festival praise, you know, unbeknownst or unexpected, you know, but uh, uh, gratifying nonetheless. Uh, it won Best Film in Florida, Saints and Sinners, and Best Film in Switzerland, which garnered $3,000, which was very helpful to bring some of the budget back into my pocket. And uh, played at the American Cinematheque, and you know, all over the world, you know, Kansas City, and you know, these great places. So it was quite rewarding that uh, festivals are my newfound friend, it seems. Hopefully, we'll do the next with the uh, next project, hit this festival circuit, and uh, see what uh, you know that brings us. The Ghouls has a very gritty feel to it. 
Do you think the style played almost as a character of its own? I think so. I mean, that was what we kind of tried because, you know, the whole thing with uh, shooting on video and it being, you know, the lead character's uh, videographer, you know, it was kind of, uh, it kind of fit the medium to be shot on that. So uh, I think that really helped. And also, you know, being downtown with the great filthy bums and the, you know, the streets and the atmosphere really lent itself to format where it picks up light much better and you know it also brings out the, the you know the atmosphere I think especially when you're you know on low budget and you don't have the ability to light everything on the sh you know gorilla style and time wise down there so it really kind of lent itself to the uh, atmosphere of the film. Working with a fraction of the catering budget of a major studio film the ghouls really seems to hold its own, if not surpass, those same films. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we really tried to, uh, you know, we made it for 10 grand, but we tried to, you know, find people who were really talented and willing to, you know, and, you know, believed in the script and believed in what they were doing to make it the best thing possible, not just somebody sitting there complaining the whole time, but someone, you know, who uh, wanted to give 100% in their field, and I think that shows everyone who was there that worked on it really loved being there, and their efforts really pay off, I believe. For our U.S. audience, the Ghouls is only available as a rental. Is there a retail release date yet? Um, I mean, all I can say is uh, email tyla at silvernitrate.net, that's the distributor, and see what's going on with that because I'm not sure what's going on with it. I'm, after selling it, I was kind of left out of the loop. And, They've, they've got the whole the ball and they're riding on it. So the best thing to find out where it's going and where you can buy it would be to contact Silver Nitrate directly. That sounds like a plan. I think all our audience should do that. I think so too. You know, write them, demand them where you can get it. You want to get it. You want to see it. You want to know where else it can be besides Cocksucker Video because that's who who wants to rent from Cocksucker Video, not me. What can we look forward to in the future from Chat Fair? We're, funny enough that you may ask, we're shooting Easter Bunny Kill Kill at the end of February, beginning of March. And it's starring Joe Palaio, Timothy Muscatel, Trent Haga, Tiffany Shepes. That sounds like an all-star lineup. Easter it's an Bunny ensemble. Yes. Easter Bunny Kill Kill. It's uh, a killer Easter Bunny. Well, we all look forward to seeing that. Yes, yes. Um, and thank you for coming down and talking to Independent Horror News. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, that about wraps up this issue of I-10, Independent Horror News, to go. We'll be back next month with the best in independent horror news. I'm your host, Julie O'Malley, and have a bloody good time at the movies. <laughs>